Rachel Lee, one of the accused thieves, will be arraigned in Los Angeles today. Five others have already been charged, and we have an exclusive interview with one of the ringleaders in just a moment. But first, Mike Von Fremd has new information about how the burglars chose their targets and why. Police say the bling ring snatched more than $3 million worth of high-end handbags, Rolexes, and designer clothes. In the latest issue of Vanity Fair, Nick Prugo, an alleged member of the gang, reveals new details of how and why different celebrities were targeted, saying Paris Hilton was the first. They picked her as the first victim because they thought she was, quote, dumb. And when they got to her house, in fact, there was a key under the mat. The gang allegedly robbed Hilton's house five times. Also victimized, actors Orlando Bloom, Lindsay Lohan, and Rachel Bilson. The bling ring did their homework, studying the internet to learn exactly when the star's mansions would be empty. I think that their boldness has something to do, perhaps, with the breakdown of privacy in the age of Twitter and Facebook and social networking when celebrities are telling us intimate details of their lives. What is perhaps most shocking is the alleged gang members who face burglary charges are now becoming rich and famous. 18-year-old Alexis Nears is shooting her own reality TV show. It's about celebrity culture, brand names, designer goods, the obsession with fame, all wrapped up in one, you know, made-for-TV movie about Teenagers. There's even the possibility the celebrity victims, such as Hilton, Lohan, and Bloom, will all be called to court to testify against the bling ring. A parent's nightmare, the paparazzi's dream. For Good Morning America, Mike Von Frem, ABC News, Hollywood. And one of the ringleaders, Nick Prugo, joins us now from Los Angeles. Good morning. Good morning. So, Nick, you've confessed to the crimes, but you're pleading not guilty. Are you sorry for what you've done or sorry you got caught? Well, I'm definitely sorry for what I've done. I'm trying to take early responsibility of my crimes and I'm just trying to make amends with all the victims. I, I feel really bad for what I did. How are you going to do that? How are you going to make amends? Well, I, I started by giving the stuff back, you know, everything I had in my possession and just trying to help out the police as much as I can with the other people involved. Um, it's been difficult. Um, I'm just really trying to do what I can. Take us back to the beginning. Why did you all do this in the first place? How did it get started? Well, why is it's, it's kind of a hard question for me to answer because there's, there's a lot of factors. Um, I mean, it was definitely, there was a thrill to it, but also these people, you know, I, I trusted. They were my best friends, and I was, you know, the, the peer pressure and just trying to, like, please them and, you know, just trying to keep my friends and... Trying to keep your friends? So your friends are saying, boy, let's go out and, and, and rob all these houses? It was a shared responsibility. It's, it wasn't really, you know, just one person. I mean, it was a team of us. Um, we all, you know, had equal responsibilities in it. And I'm trying to take responsibility for my part and just let the world know and the victims know that I am sorry. So you're all sitting around saying, let's go knock off Paris Hilton's house. How does that come together? It didn't just come together and overnight. I mean, it, this was built up over, you know, years. We're not, well, a year and a half, whatever it was. And it escalated. It started out small, you know, being cars and just looking at little things. And then it escalated into homes and then celebrities' homes. And it became very big, very fast. And I don't think any of us realized, you know, how severe it was um, until we actually got caught and, you know, it, it came to light. How could you not? You're sneaking into people's houses, you're trying to get by security cameras. These are some of the most famous people in the world. Yes, um, I mean, and I was, you know, scared to death the entire time. It, it, and it just, the reassurance of your friends in the moment and just saying it's okay, it's not a big deal. And it just seemed, it didn't seem as bad as it was. And, you know, now that I look back, I, I, I realize how serious it was. and. It just, it, it scares me to death thinking about what I did and what happened and well, I just... Try to put yourself back in that moment. In what kind of universe does that feel okay? Well, it wasn't okay. It, it definitely wasn't okay. And I realize that now and it was just th the thrill and, you know, being involved with your friends and doing these things and 
It, it, I definitely don't think it was okay. Some of your former friends now say you're a rat. Well, you know, I mean, they're going to say what they, they're going to say. And, I mean, if me taking responsibility for my crimes and trying to help out the police makes me a rat, um, then so be it. I'm, I'm just trying to make amends and do right. One final question. What do you say to someone who's watching at home and they're watching you and, and you seem sincere right now, but they're wondering, you know, he's confessing now to keep himself out of jail. He seems sorry, but once the trial's over, he's going to come back and cash in. On what he did. Well, I mean, I'm I'm never I'm not going to try to cash in on what I did. It's it's not about that for me. I when I confessed, it was you know for my own conscience. It was f for me to be able to sleep at night and feel better. And I'm I mean, this is just a very difficult time for me. And I've just embarrassed my family and myself so much. And I'm just really sorry. Okay, Nick, well, thanks a lot for your time this morning. We hope you do make those amends. Thank you for letting me speak.